Hi, this is Kurt Vale with MyStaffordSprings.com. Here with Stafford's own Matt Bissett, uh, GFL lightweight champ and also reality fighting lightweight champ. Um, your GFL, actually, thank you for spending some time with us here at MyStaffordSprings.com. No um, the GFL fight against Benoit, um, you tell me a little something about that. It was pretty highly, that, is that your biggest victory to date so far? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Benoit was my biggest fight. He was the previously ranked number four lightweight fighter in the Northeast, and wow. I, I overtook that, now I am number four. Uh, John had a big following and a big name, and uh, I was actually uh, the underdog for that fight. And uh, just coming out on top felt awesome. Well, I bet it did. You know, you made him tap out. What? what? Yeah, I, I choked him in the second round with a, a guillotine choke, and I can show you that if you want. But, yeah, uh, actually, go ahead. <laughs> Matt's gonna show me real quick the use the move he used. Which move was it? Uh, guillotine choke. The guillotine choke. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, so he used to defeat John Benoit up in the Saugus Center. It's actually a very simple show, um, but it's very difficult to finish, especially if you got a, such a good um, purple belt in jiu-jitsu and a, a wrestler. But it, it's real easy. Your, net, your arms are going to go around his head like so, and you're cutting off both sides of the blood flow to his head here. And this other arm is going to come around and lock like this. And your arm comes up and you choke. That works. <laughs> I wish I could have held out a few seconds longer though. Woo! But yeah, I got him with, uh, he was tapping with two or three seconds left on the clock. And then he kept tapping, kept tapping. And they officially stopped that at 4.59. So one second left. Wow. In the yeah. Just to give the people here in Stafford. Um, you grew up in Stafford. There's other guys in Stafford as well that are fighting MMA fighting. Um, can you? Like, yeah. Who else in town is doing that? Uh, Mark and John McLaughlin, um, two of my good friends. Uh, both those guys I I started with over in Kip's basement in Marlboro, Connecticut. Uh, Kip is the president of North American Grappling Association, so he's a really big name in. Uh, in the world, actually, not only in the United States, but in the world, um, they n really know what they're doing over there. So I, I started with those two. I started with uh, Mike Bartholomew, and currently I'm training with Mike Bartholomew at Underdog BJJ in Hartford. Okay, now are they what? Um, Mike, are they also lightweight fighters, or? Oh, well, Mark. Mark fights at 185. Uh, he walks at about 205. Uh, John fights at 135. He walks at about 150-ish. Uh, Mike walks at about 205 and fights at 185. Wow. Actually, I forgot. Uh, Jeff Haddad also grew up in uh, Stafford. He moved to Old Saber. I forgot to yep. mention him, but he is an um, outstanding wrestler, uh, state champion in high school. Uh, now he's fighting in the way. It's funny is Jeff is fighting John in uh, at the Mohegan Cup that I'm fighting. Wow, Which that's really great. Funny. And we're going to talk about that too. Matt and um, two other Stafford guys are going to be fighting at the Mohegan Sun this October. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later. Um, growing up in Stafford, um, playing sports, doing different things, um, did that help? Were you, you know, growing up here? Yeah. Did, did you play a lot of sports? Yeah. I was all, it's, it's a small town. Um, and I, I was friends with everybody, and everybody was just so competitive. With, with sports and all my best friends played you know, baseball, basketball, soccer, football, and throughout every sport, it just had a really competitive nature. And I guess I just brought that with me uh, into the latter years. That's good. Matt, were the, did you have any like childhood um, influences or anything that kind of think might have benefited you in, in getting into mixed martial arts? Um, I guess I was real close with my brother growing up, but at the same time we butted heads, yep. and uh, whether it was uh, sports or video games, not, not that it's one to lose to each other. Sometimes it got a little rowdy because you're young and stuff, but I, I guess maybe it was my brother, because he was three years older than me, he was always bigger than me, and uh, I was always a smaller guy, and I, I probably had to develop some sort of strength that way, I guess yeah. I would be able to answer that. Yeah, my um, what, what? When did you know that mixed martial arts was something? What What inspired you to get into mixed martial arts? At what age? Um, did something kick off in your head to make you say, "I want to get into MMA fighting"? You know, Kurt, I didn't even know about MMA cage fighting at all until I was about 21. And uh, my friend John Bork, who grew up in Stafford as well, 
um, he's just like, hey, come over, I got these cool videos I'm going to show you. And I was like, alright. So I'm hanging out with John, and he just shows me this cage fight and stuff. Randy Couture, he tore Belfort, big names back like, uh, you know, 10 years ago, still big names. But, um, and I immediately was like, oh, this is really cool, let's try it. And we were trying the techniques in the living room and stuff like that, and then it just led to, hey, let's uh, sign up at a class together, and such and such, and then I, I met friends at the University of Hartford, which then uh, led to me going to Kips. So it was, chronologically, it was just it was perfect. Yeah. You know, just kind of started too late in my life, but uh, mm -hmm. I wish I had started like, much younger. But it's worked out pretty Yeah, I'm doing so well, so. Yeah. <laughs> You mentioned earlier you, you fight at 155. And what do you weigh now? Right now I'm about 180. 180, and, and even now you're you're in great shape, obviously. How the heck uh, do you lose 25 pounds when you're in great shape to begin with? Um, you, you really just have to be eating right while you're doing it. I'm I'm working out uh, on average like three to four hours a day. That's on average. Sometimes I'm there for like seven hours, but three to four hours a day and. You, you lose the weight fast as long as you're eating your veggies, uh, eating your fruits, you're staying away from all the, the junk food, the sugars and stuff like that. It'll come off um, and you just get more veiny, more cut up and uh, your face starts to go a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it, it goes fast and I'll probably get down to about 167, 168 um, two weeks before the fight and then I really, really make my meals uh, smaller and then I'll cut about uh, 10 to 12 pounds in the sauna the day before weighing. So I sit in the sauna, the sweat's on, and I sweat 10 to 12 pounds. Wow, that sounds intense, man. What's your professional record? My pro record is 7-2. Uh, I'm actually currently on a four-fight winning streak um, in which I gather the GFLA weight championship, the reality fighting lightweight championship. Uh, I beat the number nine ranked guy at the time. On the east, uh, the northeast, and I beat the four-ranked guy, and I also beat a uh, state champion in high school wrestler in a 25-minute fight. All right, Matt. Obviously, your training is pretty extensive. Where do you train? Who do you train with? And give us kind of an idea of what the average day of training uh, would be. Um, I train in Hartford on New Park Avenue, uh, underdog BJJ, with Fabiano Atellas, who's my jiu-jitsu instructor, and the gym is named after him. Um, I train under Russell Lee in my striking. Uh, he's a uh, Sifu and Jeet Kune Do, uh, which is Bruce Lee's martial art. Um, he's direct lineage of Bruce Lee. Uh, any given day, um, I could be training up to about six hours. I'm training my striking, uh, my strength and conditioning, CrossFit workouts, uh, my jiu-jitsu, my wrestling, judo, any martial art you could possibly think of. Uh, breaking a sweat, dropping like 10, 12 pounds a day, and having to drink, drink, drink water back with it. So about how many hours a day do you think you work out on the average? On average, about three to four hours, but uh, I can be there for quite a while sometimes. Yeah, yeah that, that, in the origins of the UFC, there was a lot of different styles, but it's like everybody seems to now be well versed in a lot of things together. Yeah, like, and that's how I, it's got to be because if you're just a, a great striker and the other guy is a great striker with decent wrestling, he's just going to take you to the ground. Mm -hmm. So you got to be versed in everything and you really got to put the time in to make yourself better everywhere you fall or else you're just not going to make it to the top levels. Or if you make it to the top levels, you're not going to stay there if you're not training correctly. Yeah, because it seems like the whole sport's evolved. I remember the old days. The day of Tank Abbott, I think, might be gone. Overhand, right? Yeah. He was fun to watch, but uh, yeah, I think it seems as if it's, it's progressed into something much bigger than it was to it. Yeah. So you got a big fight coming up on, um, what day is it? October 8th. Okay, October 8th at the Mohegan Sun. Um, who are you fighting? Um, what do you know about him? Yeah, I'm fighting Joe Proctor. He's 5-1 uh, amateur, 7-1 professional. So he's had uh, quite a few more fights than me. Um, he fights out of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, uh, Lausanne, and then. Um, last fight when you fought Benoit, that was uh, where? Was that in Lowell? That was at the yeah the Saga Center in Lowell, Massachusetts. That was the most hyped fight in the history. Of really? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I saw a lot of stuff on Ness and 
you had a pretty big following from Stafford come up, didn't you, uh, up for that play? Yeah, uh, I actually sold uh, a little over 200 tickets. Um, but then I stopped selling a week and a half beforehand, and there were still people coming up to me asking to buy tickets. Several people coming up to me. And uh, I probably had about 230 people there just for myself. And I had a, a lot of people from Massachusetts that came as well. Uh, they were too was loud. And it's cool, and it, you know, it's nice to have, when you're from a small town, you get that type of following, and um, what we need to do in October is get you a lot more than 230 down at Mohegan Sun. That sounds right here awesome. In Connecticut. That sounds That's awesome. what we got to do. The louder, the more, the more electricity in there. It yeah, does it, pumps it, can, me you can hear it in, in Jack Shop. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we definitely got to get down there and get, we got to get 500 at least. <laughs> That'd be incredible. Yeah. It really is. We look forward to you. Uh, down in the Mohegan Sun this October. 500 people. 500. Do this. Absolutely. We guarantee it. This is Matt Brissett, GFL Lightweight Champion and Reality Fighting Lightweight Champion. You can follow me on Facebook and you can also check out my website www.mattbrissett.net.